So our third and final proclamation for today is for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And I'll turn this over to Council Member Sydney Moore. Thank you. <clears throat> Whereas in Washington State, 45% of women and 22% of men report having experienced sexual violence and evidence indicates that transgender and gender non-binary people are at even greater risk and Whereas 29% of the survivors who were supported by community sexual assault organizations statewide identified as Black, Indigenous, and people of color in 2019, of those identifying ethnicity, 21% identified as Latinx or Hispanic, and whereas rape is among the most underreported crimes for many reasons, including victims' fear of being disbelieved or further traumatized within the legal system. Additional barriers such as language, immigration status, gender bias, and systemic racism further oppress and silence victims. And whereas individual and community impacts of sexual violence are rooted in and compounded by racial, gender, sexual orientation, and other forms of oppression, Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, people living in poverty, LGBTQIA plus people, elders, people with disabilities, and other people targeted by oppression are affected by sexual violence in significant and complex ways. And whereas sexual violence exists on a continuum of behavior and includes racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, ableist, or other hate speech, this ranges from rape jokes to verbal harassment to threats of rape and assault. Harassing comments and behaviors that take place online can and do traumatize victims and their impacts should not be minimized. And whereas 41% of Americans have been personally subjected to harassing behavior online and people from historically oppressed groups are more likely to experience online harassment mirroring inequities we see elsewhere in society. And whereas negative impacts of sexual Violence trauma on adults, youth, and children include fear, concern for safety, missed work or school, injury, and physical and mental health conditions, including symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And <clears throat> whereas working together as a community, we can alleviate the trauma of sexual violence by ensuring supportive resources are available to survivors while standing up to and actively disrupting harmful attitudes and behaviors that contribute to sexual violence. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Burien, Washington, joins advocates and communities in taking action to prevent sexual violence by standing with survivors and proclaiming April 2022 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the City of Burien and urges all community members to join us as we commit to a safer future for all children, young people, adults, and families in our community, dated this 18th day of April 2022. And we have with us today uh, Laurel Redden, the Director of Communications for the King County Sexual Assault Resource Center to accept our proclamation. Thank you so much. I, I so appreciate um, Mayor Aragon, uh, Deputy Mayor Schilling, all members of the City Council for being part of the solution to sexual violence. Um, I particularly also want to thank Council Member Mata, who was one of our Be Loud advocates at our Be Loud breakfast last month. Terrific job. We really appreciated your support and your, your great words. Um, let me tell you a little bit about KSARC is what we call ourselves. Um, if you're not familiar, um, we're a nonprofit that assists survivors and families in Burien um, and in all communities throughout King County. Um, altogether, KSARC served 5,000 individuals in the last year. Um, and that is a 23% increase over the number we supported just five years ago. Almost half of our clients are under age 18. And I mention that because young people are the age group that are most at risk of sexual assault. They're also the group that's most savvy about connecting to the world online. Um, and I, that brings me to, you know, the focus of this year's Sexual Assault Awareness Month, month excuse me, which is uh, building safer spaces online. Uh, we believe it's necessary and relevant to make sure members of the community understand that real harm can start online or it can take place entirely online. So, for example, as most of us turn to things like devices and screens to attend meetings like this or to work or to learn, to socialize, build our connections, um, we here at KSARC have seen um, abusive behavior online escalate. Things like uh, sharing of images without consent, 
online harassment over social media or text messaging, so-called Zoom bombing, um, all sorts of things are happening and young people are particularly vulnerable. So during this month of awareness, we're encouraging parents and caregivers to have conversations with the young people in their lives about boundaries, uh, consent, healthy communications and things like that. Um, we're also urging parents out there to take it seriously if they see or hear their child is experiencing abuse or questionable behavior online. Um, at KSARC, we always say we can't change what we can't talk about. So let me tell you what you're doing here tonight is really important. You're talking about sexual violence. Um, and by doing so, you're sending an important message to survivors. That message is you're not alone and your story matters. And that's very important for survivors to hear. You're also sending a terrific message that your community needs to know. And that is we can prevent sexual violence, but it takes everyone's involvement. Thank you so much for your leadership and your willingness to be loud about sexual assault. Thank you, Laurel.